Welcome to my leadership series. I'm negotiation and leadership strategist, Elizabeth Suarez. My goal is to help you enhance your skills to establish a more profitable, inclusive, and productive workplace. Throughout this series, I will be talking to industry leaders and delving into their managerial styles. In today's video, I am spotlighting John Andrew. He is the CEO of Fortify. Good morning, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. It's great to, to have you here. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit more. So let me start from like the beginning. Like, can you share with me where did you grow up and where did you decide to go to college and what did you decide to study? I'm just curious. Oh, man. Wow, that's you're going to the way back machine. Now. Yes, I like it. Yes. Uh, yeah, I grew up in a little town um, in North Carolina called Asheboro. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to be confused with Asheville in, in the mountains, which most people know. Asheboro is a small town in the uh, geographic center of the state. And its uh, claim to fame is it has the North Carolina Zoological Park, which is the largest natural habitat zoo in the world. Most of the animals live in natural kind of surroundings and cages and stuff. So oh, okay. uh, kind of interesting. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up in a small town and um, I actually took a non-traditional college path. I did not go to college at a high school. I was an underachiever in high school. <laughs> and uh, so I thought I would uh, explore some other things first. Uh, and I got the opportunity to move to Maine and run a restaurant. Uh, run, run a oh. Domino's Pizza. I had been working for Domino's Pizza as a delivery driver and they had a management training program. And so I thought I would try that because you could become a franchisee. And I'm like, oh, great. And then I got to move to Maine. So I lived in Maine for, for five years and uh, really enjoyed my, um, my career with Domino's. I, I learned how to run a small business. And mm -hmm. I, I think um, that was great. You know, I hired people. I, I, uh, 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 motivated them. I, I uh, did the books. I did, you know, you, you're a small business mm -hmm. uh, manager, which, which was fun. And then I decided, yeah, maybe I should go to school and now, you know, learn some, some new skills to go with this. So I went to a, uh, a small college in North Carolina, in Hickory, North Carolina, called Lenore mm -hmm. Rhine, um, which, which I'm a fourth generation legacy. A lot of my family has gone to school there. Oh, okay. uh, and then I went to grad school at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, to I, I had a wonderful um, guidance career coach in college that uh, said, hey, what do you want to do for career? And I said, I don't think I want to be in advertising. Oh, I'm a college kid, right? And uh, they said, great, you're going to you know, live in New York and make uh, $25,000 a year and live with five people in an apartment. I said, man, that sounds awesome. They said, what, what do you think about brand management? I'm like, ooh, what, tell me more. You know, what is this? They said, well, you need an MBA and you go to work for brand and you manage a brand. I'm like, oh, okay, I like that. that. That sounds good. So I went uh, and, and to Wake Forest. Uh, they had a lot of relationships um, with many of the uh, the Sara Lee Hain, uh, uh, apparel brands, Hanes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, there, there were five divisions in Winston-Salem and they uh, recruited from Wake Forest heavily as did RJ Reynolds, uh, okay. who, who was there. So now American tobacco, or British American tobacco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, it was a great opportunity to learn. And, and I've been a brand um, marketer ever since. Wow. Okay. So you went from pizza delivery to pizza, pizza management. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That's a great path. So with that path, can you define for me what is leadership? Wow. That's a great question. You know, uh, leadership, I'll define leadership from one of my leader uh, heroes, which was Sam Walton. So mm. I went to, uh, I, I got the opportunity uh, in early 2000s to uh, go to work for Walmart and, mm -hmm. uh, and I moved to Arkansas and, and worked uh, for Wal at Walmart's headquarters there in Bentonville. And I had always admired Sam Walton. One of the first business books I ever read was uh, Made in America by Sam yeah. Walton. And, and I always liked Sam's leadership style, which uh, he described often as leadership by walking around. Right. So yes. Sam spent so much time, not only in his, right, 
but in his competitor stores. They knew him, right? They were like, oh, Mr. Sam's here. They liked him, right? You know, and, and he would study what they do, but more importantly, he would ask people what, what, what they're doing and how's your day and what are your challenges and those, those things and empowered them to make decisions. You know, the, those early Walmart managers were, there's stories after stories after stories of how they made decisions that were supported by Mr. Sam. He might give them some feedback, but basically he said, this is your store, you go run it, right? Mm -hmm. And and, and, uh, and they did, and, and he promoted, you may, may be familiar with Walmart has uh, had a Saturday morning meeting every Saturday morning. It's pretty yes, famous. I have heard so of like that, six, yes. Six in the morning, right? Six yes. in the morning on a Saturday, every manager and, and leadership person went. And we, we went to that meeting when we, when my wife and I worked for, for Walmart and they were still doing them every, every Saturday morning. It was a sharing uh, opportunity for stores to share what was going on there, then I could get ideas from my store. So a long answer to your question, but I really believe a good leader promotes this interaction and collaboration between people, right? Works to, works to connect the dots across a big organization or a small organization. You know, we're, my, our company, Photify, we're 10 people, right? And, and sometimes we, we, we're 10 people, right? It's not a lot. <laughs> you know? it, it, sometimes we're like, well, the, you know, this group is talking and this group is talking and they're like, don't know what each other's doing. Like, we're 10 people. How can we not? <laughs> you know, how, we're, we're not Walmart. We're not 2 million people. You know, we know. have to be able to communicate as a team. And I think a leader's job is to foster that cohesiveness of a team and, and, and support and, and take away uh, uh, barriers to, to what problems are having. The, the, the thing I ask my team members all the time is what's in your way that I can help with? How can I, I like take that. something out of your way? Right. So I like it, that. What's what problem? In your way? Yeah. Right. What, how, how can I take something out of your way? I'm not telling you what to do. How can I remove an obstacle? You know, and, and I think that's my job as a leader. We have super smart people on our team, a lot smarter than me. And I just want them to be able to do their job uh, you know, without, oh, I need a new computer. My computer's slow, you know. Uh, okay, well, that's a solvable problem. <laughs> we mm -hmm. can do that, you know, okay. whatever. whatever. Right. So, yeah. so I, I like how you talked about uh, how Sam Walton defined leadership. Uh, my background, uh, I started as an engineer in a manufacturing floor. So mm -hmm. walking the floor, I was sure. taught that in my first day of job that I had to walk the floor. I could not be in the office. If I spend more than 10% of my time in my office, I was failing. That's what I was right. told when I was 22 years old as, a, as wow. a production. Yes. Isn't that amazing? So I, and, and when I read Sam Walton, because I did read his book made mm -hmm. in America, I smiled when I read that aspect, when he said, right, you have to right. walk the floor. I was like, oh my God, that even goes to manufacturing. This is not just, you know, uh, retail. This is also manufacturing. So now let's change a little bit to the conversation about inclusive leadership. Um, mm -hmm. You know, leadership is important and everything, but there has been this mandate or this uh, move towards saying we run an inclusive organization. Uh, so what is your opinion on the subject of inclusion in the workplace? You know, I, I'm gonna, I have an interesting answer to that, which is, um, and I forget who says this, but we, we talk about this a little bit at Photofy. An, an engaged employee is somebody who feels like they matter to the business. And, and you've seen these, I'm sure in your role, you've seen these surveys that half or more of employees are completely disengaged from their business, yes. right? They're, they're getting a page. And, and they, by the way, that's the people who admit it on a survey. So it's probably higher than that, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and I just think that's tragic, right? You know, mm -hmm. how does my role uh, add to whatever we are doing in, in a company, right? So, so you, you talk about one of the leadership roles, setting a clear vision. You know, I, I send a, a uh, now that we're, our, our team has been remote since March, right? And, and several times a week, I'll find a story that, that I'm reading or something 
that is about a company company vision. You know, where are they going? What are they doing? In fact, we started this year with Elon Musk's vision for Tesla. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know. It, it, it's by the way, it's it's four bullet points. Right? Yes. Make, make a make a I, I can't recite it. make a, a, a expensive sports car to fund the business. Right. Make a then a more affordable car to expand the business. Make a really affordable car to really grow the business. Yeah. And then I, I like number four is actually and I don't think people realize this or read this about Tesla a lot. Actually redefine the the entirety of the the, the fossil fuel fuel fueled car and self it, it it is so much bigger than a car company yeah and you hear those you know and that vision setting to me creates a a um, a, a clear picture for everybody on that Tesla team what am I doing here from the people working the manufacturing floor to the people who work in legal and finance, to the people mm -hmm. who, who sell and service the, the automobile. Everybody knows, you know, Jeff Bezos does this with, with Amazon. You know, their, their, their day zero is every day we're starting over at day zero. And our yeah. job is to make shopping easier for our customers. That's it, right? That's you it. know, and, and, and I think that uh, creates inclusivity by, um, giving people a why am I here right and, and why am I uh, why am I part of this organ what what is my role doing and and in a good organization I think that floats down you, you know that that's mm -hmm. that's driven by the top but that floats down into every piece you know in bad organizations I think people are showing up and doing a job and not sure how their piece fits into the, the greater whole Right. Yeah. You know, and, and so I, you know, I really believe if you want an, an inclusive organization, everybody on your team has to understand how they uh, are contributing to the overall vision of the company. So that's a great point concerning the inclusiveness. So let's talk about a diverse organization. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest challenge for a leader like yourself? that needs to lead a diverse organization because it's, mm -hmm. there, there's a big difference. And it's not only concerning ethnicity or race. I mean, we're like, we're talking every subject, age, yeah. you know, gender, sure. religious sure. belief, political affiliation. I mean, you're talking everything. So what is the biggest challenge? I, I, I really believe in it. This is from my own point of view as well. Um, you know, I, I really believe that you, can't really you, you can't really lead a diverse or you you you've got to have understanding of other people's point of view you got to have empathy right yeah um mm -hmm. and it's a lot of times i believe that can be very challenging because mm -hmm. i don't have um i have a set of life experiences right and they're pretty broad you know pretty broad you know i i didn't uh, um uh, you, you know, I, I grew up in, in a diverse culture, you know, in, 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 in North Carolina, I did, I didn't grow up in a, in a, uh, kind of homogeneous culture. So that's good. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I grew up in, in the mid eighties, right. In the mid eighties, a big different time than, than where, what are we now? 2021. 2021. <laughs> right. And, and I, I went to, I, um, I do some adjunct teaching at, uh, at North Carolina state. Um, and, and I tell my students, you know, I graduated from business school in 1997, right? Mm -hmm. Still a very different view of the world. Yeah. If you think, I mean, if you think about, um, you, you know, th there were not very many senior women leaders in no. 1997. That's not a long time ago, but I mean, mm -hmm. there, there were not, right? So these are all of our collective experiences. And, and as we grow and as our cultures and our lives become not only more diverse in, if you, you think about just our, you, you and I were speaking earlier about uh, you know where we live, right? Uh, most cities are becoming much more culturally diverse mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than they ever were, right? But now because of our connection to really the whole world, right? Yeah. Um, the, the, there is a new, 
experience that people half my age are growing up with, my daughter is growing mm -hmm. up with, that I didn't have, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I understand that? You know, how do, how do I get involved? And I, I think one way is to actively seek out the experiences of others that are not like you. Um, okay. and, and, and really try to, to, to understand them. You know, I, I try to have a diverse friends group, try to have a diverse, uh, uh, connect, e even if it's virtual, right. Yes. You know, I, I'm connected now with people in, in, in countries that, uh, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, I just, yeah. just shared an Instagram post with a, a, a friend that I had made in, in Nepal. Right. But I follow this, this person in Nepal. And, and learn a little about a life that I would never know. When, when could you have done that in, in the mid nineties, totally. you know? T T totally. So let's talk about, you know, this ongoing pandemic that we all have been experiencing for way too long, <laughs> to tell you the <laughs> truth. Um, leaders- have And we're not to, done. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not even close. And leaders have had to reinvent the way they conduct business. I mean, right. and I know you mentioned you've been remote since March of 2020, and there's still uh, more changes that have come. What were some of the actions you had to implement immediately in order to stay afloat sure. with this pandemic? Well, uh, no, 100%. I was just having this conversation with someone yesterday. I think what this time has done, the the, the the, all of the challenges and the, the, the tribulations and the, the, you know, the negative of the mm -hmm. pandemic. The positive is we probably advanced change two to 10 years, depending yes. on, on, on how we, and one of the big changes, I think, we, is we've kind of debunked the idea that people can work from home and be successful, be efficient, mm -hmm. be successful, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. I mean, we don't have to debate that anymore. You know, no. our company last year, we doubled the number of users of our product year over year. Wow. We did that working from home. We did that working efficiently. We had to put some, some things into place. Again, um, you, you know, the, the beauty of the, the pandemic today, if you will, is we had Slack and Zoom and all, and, and mm -hmm. it, you know, all of these toolkits that, that were there, you know, 20 years ago, might not, might not have been the same, but mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, you know, we communicate, I, I feel like I'm connected to our team all day on Slack, yes. you know, if I, from on my computer, on my phone, it doesn't matter. Uh, if I'm in this office or I'm, I'm doing something else, doesn't matter, we're, we're connected. Um, we work to talk to each other. I, I generally will talk to uh, every member of our team. Oh, great, we only have ten people, <laughs> but yeah, you know, on a, on a daily or other. But but you know, we, we talk to each other, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, physically via phone or something. You know, voice. You know, not just, yeah. not just texting. Mm -hmm. or, and, and and we we try to find times to get together. I I get the I have lunch um, outside with our, um, with our technical team once a week, you know, yeah. it's just a time we can break bread. And, and I believe we're learning new ways of working, which is great, right? Which because is great, yes. We, you know, we're going to, the world was going here anyway, the pandemic just moved us forward, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think the tool sets um, made that possible, but also, we, you know, we, we found more efficient ways to work. We tend to not use, and I've even seen some companies that have banned email internally, right? Yeah. So they only use their email because you could get lost in email. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. We kind of don't use, if I tell people, if you want me, Slack me, call me, text me. Um, yeah. Email is absolutely the worst way to communicate with me because it's, it's just probably not going to happen. I know. Um, I know. So, so I think it, 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 made us get out of our comfort zones and, and do and try some different things. And I think we're going to take a lot of those things with us post pandemic and there'll be a blend of how mm -hmm. we work. So you mentioned post pandemic. So looking at this post pandemic world, what do you see as some key opportunities that lie ahead for businesses? 
Great question. Um, I, I think embracing, part of that is embracing the way people, um, uh, we, people are doing things, right? Yes. So, so change has happened. Okay. There will not be a return to last February, right? It's just not going to happen. So I, I'm a big fan and follower of the retail space, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Walmart, my, my former employer, um, had for, for several years in the e-commerce war that they are having with Amazon, gone out and bought brands like Bonobos and all of these things. And, and a couple years ago, it really made a push to focus on pickup and delivery, right? Okay. And when we think about e-commerce, that's not that sexy, right? It's not as cool as yeah. you know, some of the other things. But if you're a Walmart shopper and half the people in the United States shop at Walmart, go through the door of a Walmart once a week, right? So, so think about that. Your core customer is still connected, especially in smaller towns, to that mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. That move and then the, the pandemic was, was absolutely perfect for Walmart's customers because it could service its customers. And I, I think the, the first month of big lockdowns in March or April, I don't remember the exact, their e-commerce, their, their store pickup uh, went to 30% of, of their total volume. Mm. Think about that. Yeah, but they were. Uh, they happened to be ready for that because mm -hmm. at some point they had said, "Yeah, we probably just adding e-commerce brands doesn't make sense for our customer. What makes sense is to think about how do we make their lives easier in shopping, and that became pickup, right? Okay. So, so that's a long answer to think about. People's behavior has changed, right? Um, uh, Time Warner caused a, a bunch of controversy releasing Wonder Woman. Um, yes. uh, uh, on on um, on HBO Plus or Max or I don't know what a, whatever the yeah. brand. I'm, I'm confused about its branding, <laughs> but whatever. Um, but you know what? They said, "Hey, this is the way people are consuming content right now, and we're yes. gonna have to just instead of you know the studios got mad, people it's very controversial and whatever. But hey, it's the way people are consuming content. We need to be respectful of that." And maybe we think about how we make the in theater experience more special so that I'll actually, you know, maybe I saw Wonder Woman when it came out. Maybe I want to go see it in the theater now, or I don't yeah. know. But, but, but again, we're going to have to think about instead of, hey, shoppers and customers, go back to doing the way things you were doing. It, it's no, how do you want to do things? And, and how yes. are we going to embrace the way that? makes your life be our lives are, are complicated they're busy they're they're full mm -hmm. how do i make your life easier right how do i take friction out of your life that is what wins my business and i i think that's what wins a lot a lot of people's business you know so that that's a great point for my last question that i have for you because this is sure. my last question it's like mm -hmm. what would be the one key advice you will give a younger John Andrews right now? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. You know, um, I, uh, I believe we live in a really interesting time where learning um, it becomes a, a, a um, it's, it's so much more accessible to learn, not only from the experts, mm -hmm. right? But I can go learn from anyone, right? It, you know, and, and I, I mentioned to you and when we were talking earlier about, I, I've become a big fan of Reddit. Right? Yeah. And, and what I like about Reddit communities, especially the communities that are, that are very serious about um, a, a certain subject is if you go and ask a question, you will get thoughtful, interactive answers and discussions. I, mm -hmm. I love this idea, right? So, so since learning is so accessible today, really focus on um, learning something new, improving your skills, thinking about, you know, constantly, right? It, you know, I, I think about my, my career as a marketer, 
And the things that, that I learned to do as a marketer are pretty much, I mean, the, the structure is the same, mm -hmm. but everything else is gone, right? You know, okay. I, I mean, it, you know, if, if you think about what a marketer does today versus what a marketer did in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, oh, yeah. right? You, you know, your, your, uh, your <laughs> skill set is, uh, is massively different and your need to yeah. understand um, a whole, it, the, there's no substitute for understanding what are the, what are the needs and the, the wants of a, of a customer mm -hmm. of a shop. That hasn't changed, right? Mm -hmm. How you talk to them, how you interact with them, how you engage with them completely changed as well as how you measure that and how you understand that, you know, yet I still get, as do you, as does every person that listens to this video, two, 300 emails a day, probably now yes. promotional emails a day. Yes. Like why, why, you know, because, because a lot of marketers are going, well, you know, we still send emails because it's the most effective and whatever medium out there. I'm like, it's not, it's not, you're just spamming tons of people exactly. to, get, to get increasingly diminishing returns. But hey, you're measured on how many people order the widget because I sent an email. That's the wrong approach, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the the advice I would give is learn new things, participate, in, you know, in the thing, you know, we call it eating your own dog food. So, so uh, oh. you you need to go shop your store, call uh -huh. your company's customer service line. Uh, you, you know, really understand what that experience and, and constantly be learning what that experience is of, of your, your shopper, of your customer and, and how they are experiencing your brand. And I, I think that that's something that I did, but would, would have benefited of doing a lot more of that. So I want to thank everybody that has been watching. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this conversation. Let's continue discussing it by commenting below. And in the meantime, I will see you next time. Nos vemos.